Hey, it's Sean Reddy, Keller Williams Reddy Group. We're here with the weekly market roundup of the Denver Metro housing market. And before we get into the actual market numbers, breaking news on the mortgage front, we have seen a basically 18% drop in rates in the last two months. And even more striking is the last couple of days since the Fed's speech after their uh, last meeting of 2023 sent rates from, let's see, 7.09 yesterday all the way down to 6.62 today. So that is one of the biggest two-day drops in mortgage rates in recorded history. So stay tuned for more on that. I'm plastering that everywhere across social media and email blasts, things like that. Uh, So I don't know if it's made national headlines yet. However, it will. Okay, let's move on to the housing market numbers. As always, these stats are brought to us by our friends at First American Title. And this is a week-by-week breakdown of some next-level statistics uh, in the entire metro market. This is a seven-county view. So if you're looking for something that might be a little bit more catered to your specific market, your town, your suburb, your neighborhood, street, whatever, let us know. Happy to uh, drum up the numbers for that as well. Okay, let's take a look. Um, First things first, color coding. So on this right-hand side here, you can see kind of the scale here. When we're seeing these deep, deep reds and oranges, that is a more competitive market, meaning that's better if you're selling a home. When you're seeing these blues and greens, that's a less competitive market, meaning those numbers are better if you are buying a home. If you're doing both at the same time, it really shouldn't matter to you uh, what color they are. Yet, uh, let's dive into the numbers and take a look and see what is best for you and your timing into the market. Okay, because I'm assuming if you're watching this deep uh, stats geek level breakdown of numbers, you're probably looking to figure out when is the right time for you to get into the market. All right, I've talked enough. Let's get into the numbers. First things first, odds of selling. That's this relationship between supply and demand uh, and One thing we have now for the entire year is perspective. We're only missing the last, obviously, three weeks. So we can look at odds of selling last December. We're in the 40s and 30s primarily. And as we get into this December, uh, two weeks into December, we're in the lower 40s. 41.5 is the percent odds of selling. You can see it's been as high as uh, 67%, we'll call it, uh, in the spring market this year when there were much less homes on the market. But now it's currently sitting at 41.5%. That is a full percent drop from last week. Next column here is the average daily active listing count. So on any given day, how many listings are on the market? The number has come down uh, quite a bit since October was kind of the peak in the 7,700 range. Now currently sitting at 6,065. Last time we saw numbers that low, it was back in August. And compared to last year... It is roughly the same, maybe a little bit more inventory on the market. Uh, So if you're buying, that's a good thing. Okay, next column, new listings on a week-by-week basis. You can see at the peak, the market saw about 1,300 properties coming to market, a couple weeks over 1,300 coming to market. Last December, we're only seeing 500, 400, 200 properties per week coming to market. Last week, 546 came to market. That's down from 622 the week before. By the way, this week here. That's Thanksgiving week, so the numbers are going to be all kinds of jacked up there. Um, So not really comparing uh, apples to apples there. Okay, next column. Expired and withdrawn. Next two columns, I should say. These are listings that came off the market unsold uh, one way or another. You can see last week was huge with 401 expired listings. Probably the high for the year. Yeah, definitely the high for the the year and the highest since uh, the biggest expired listing day, which is December 31st. So 400 plus came off by expired last week, Uh, this week down to 190, 165 voluntarily withdrew from the market. Uh, So about 355 listings came off of the market. Uh, That could be part of the uh, number drop in the average daily active listing count. Next column, that is the number of homes that went under contract week by week. Obviously Thanksgiving week was slow, then it jumped back up to 631 and then 638. Pretty consistent in the sixes uh, and sevens over the last several weeks, call it eight to 10 weeks. Um, peak this year was around 1,100, uh, a little more than 1,100 homes coming to, or sorry, going off the market by way of going to contract. Uh, and several weeks in a row that it was 
at least 900 to 1,000 uh, back in the spring. Last year this time, we were seeing six, seven, uh, and then towards the end of the month, towards the holidays, 300, 400 homes going to contract. Probably look like that again uh, this year, except for the wild card of that huge interest rate or mortgage rate drop. Okay, next column, number of closed sales. Now, this is a lagging measure. I don't put too much week-to-week emphasis on here uh, because basically these 488 homes that closed went under contract sometime four to six weeks ago. Uh, So that's how much it's lagging. That is a big drop-off, that 488 from the previous, uh, well, two weeks, not counting Thanksgiving, uh, but then consistent with the week leading up to that. So we're going to call it slightly below average for the last couple months, maybe uh, a little bit more than slightly below average for the last couple months. 2.2 2.2 represents the amount or the month's supply of inventory on the market. And to put that in perspective, anything below four months of supply, we are in seller's market territory. Four, five, six months, we're in balanced or neutral market territory. And then over that, we're in buyer's market territory, which hasn't happened in close to a decade, if not more. Uh, last year was in the twos and, and, and uh, threes. High two, well, kind of jumping all over the place between the high ones to mid threes. Uh, but that, again, is a supply and demand uh, relationship. So if we see less listings at the market, that number goes down. Okay, skipping over a couple of these that we don't really spend time on, um, we're going to jump to this total showing column. So this is exactly how it sounds, how many buyers were out in the market looking at homes, booking showings with their agent to go look at homes. And let's see, last year in December, 9,000, 8,000, 4,000, 6,000. Uh, peak this year, 17,000. And then kind of trough this year, we're, we're essentially right there in it right now with uh, only 8,500 book showings last week, down from closer to 9,000 the week before. Again, Thanksgiving week, I'm not going to um, count that. People were doing other things besides looking at homes. Showings per listing, that did equate to 1.4, which is the exact same as last week and the exact same as the week before Thanksgiving and pretty well in line with the last several weeks, really several months. Uh, one about one and a half showings per listing over the course of the last several months per week. That's not saying that every single listing is getting their one and a half, uh, yet that is the average when you take the showings divided by the number of listings. Okay, showings to contract, exactly how it sounds, how many showings did the average listing receive before going to contract? Last week, that number was 13.3. Uh, you can see we were, I guess the high was somewhere, somewhere around, well, yeah, 16.2, so kind of been in that mid-teens range the entire course of the year. Last year at this time, the number was lower teens to get to contract. Okay, this um, next column, median days on market, uh, exactly how it sounds. The homes that went under contract last week, what was the median amount of market time that they had? So last year, we were in the mid-40s, mid-30s to mid-40s, even creeped into 50, won the last week of the year, started the year at 43. And that just started declining rapidly until we got into the mid single digits where homes only spent a median of five days on the market uh, when they were selling at their fastest in the spring. And then the number started coming back up, 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 up. Uh, And now we are currently sitting at 36 median days on market. Not the high for the year, but pretty darn close. Okay, next percent or the next uh, column here. This represents the percent of listings that had to do a price reduction in order to get under contract. Numbers held pretty steady around 50%. You can see for several months, last week, 51.2%, uh, down from the peak or from the high, uh, yet still pretty pretty darn close. Uh, d- the bottom, we're around a quarter of the listings. Well, that right there, 21% of the listings uh, had to do a price reduction to get under contract. Last year, this time, the number was actually closer to 60%. Uh, so that is some improvement. Uh, if you want to look at that, I also look at it as sellers are, you know, kind of a little bit more realistic nowadays than they were last year. Uh, 1.6% of listings that went under contract did do a price increase. 47.2% stayed the same. The average price decrease was 46,000 plus representing 6.3% of the asking price. Uh, that is higher than it has been over the last several weeks. No rhyme or reason there. It's just, you know, what does it take for, what price will it take for a home to get under contract? Last year, yeah, about the same, $45,000, $50,000 average price reduction to get under contract. Okay, 
that is the gist of what's happening right now in the Denver metro housing market. Again, broad stroke view of a seven county area. If you want this broken down more specific to you, let us know. If you like this, let us know by subscribing to the channel, uh, hitting the notification bell. That's it for now. We'll see you next week.